Hi, good evening, everyone. I'm Sarah here, the host for tonight's talk. This talk is organized by 365 Cancer Prevention Society and Oncall Care Cancer Center. Let me start off by sharing with you the flow for tonight's talk. Our main speaker tonight, Dr. Tay, Senior Consultant Medical Oncology, will be sharing with us on the topic of kidney cancer, what is new and what is next. After Dr. Tay sharing, we will be having a Q&A session. Please feel free to type your questions in the comment and we'll address them at the end of the talk. We respect your privacy and therefore do ensure the questions you ask are not too personal. Thereafter, I will end off by sharing our upcoming Facebook Live talk. Do help to share and like this Facebook Live and do visit both our social media websites by 365 Cancer Prevention Society and Oncall Care Cancer Center. Moving on to our next slide, do note that all information shared by the speakers and 365 Cancer Prevention Society are for general information only and subjected to changes. Do consult your doctor for personalized medical advice if you have any. Moving on to our next slide. My first colonoscopy campaign is a campaign that is organized by ICOM Cancer Center, 365 Cancer Prevention Society and StarMax Specialty Center. I hope that you can support us by donating to this campaign. You can donate to us by scanning the QR code on the screen. Once again, this campaign is brought to you by 365 Cancer Prevention Society, Icon Cancer Center, and Star Max Specialty Center. And let me share a brief introduction on Oncall Care Cancer Center. Oncall Care Cancer Center is one of the largest and fastest growing private healthcare providers of oncology in Singapore. Oncall Care Region is becoming a leading center in cancer care in the region and the mission of adding years and quality of, serve, of life to all patients through effective knowledge base, integrated cancer practice, and personalized treatment. Oncall Care provides patients with quality care services and treatment administered by qualified medical professionals. The services and treatment offered by Oncall Care includes diagnosis and workup of cancer for adult patients, inpatient and outpatient treatment, cancer screening and genetic counseling and testing. And as for our speaker tonight, the day, he graduated from NES in 1992 and is awarded the Ministry of Health Manpower Development Program Scholarship to train at Dana Farbo Cancer Institute. He also completed the Cancer Medicine and Hematology course at Harvard Medical School. Dr. Day was the chairperson of Cancer Education for National Cancer Center, and Dr. Day was also previously the chairperson and management committee member of Children Cancer Foundation. He is an elected member of Singapore Medical Council since 2017. Dr. Day has been actively involved in clinical and translational research for many years. His clinical interests are in prostate, kidney, testicular, and the bladder cancer. And without further ado, let's welcome Dr. Day. Hi, Sarah. Thank you very much for the very kind introduction of myself and Uncle Care Cancer Center. And cancer Center. Uh, I'd like to welcome everybody to, uh, to this to today's talk, and, um, and uh, especially on a Saturday evening where you have uh, actually precious time to be spent with your family and your loved ones. But nonetheless, I will assure you that you will, you will not will not waste uh, your time by listening to something that's where have dynamic changes as a uh, as result in a better care and better treatment for patients with kidney cancer. Let me show you my slides. Uh, let me see here. Uh, All right, finally you get in. It's been quite a, uh, we had to go through many rounds of rehearsal just to make sure that I'm in tune with the modern technology. So today we'll be talking about kidney cancer, what's now and what's next. I start off by talking about a patient, a real life patient, a 42 years old man, in, when in 2016 October, he presented with abdominal pain and weight loss. 
and he went underwent a consultation with a doctor and the scan was performed and they found a right kidney mass here this is the left kidney and this is the size of the right kidney that is not just enlarged but also deformed and this is the one that causes the pain in addition the scan also showed that at the backbone we call the vertebral body there is a destruction of the bone tissue here and it was encroaching onto the spinal cord there's a danger that this tumor may encroach onto the spinal cord and cause a paralysis he underwent a surgical treatment where he removed the tumor of the right of the right kidney and subsequently received a basic therapy called pesopedic to try to control the disease however three months later he continued to have pain and the pain was at the right hip the back and the liver and he he had a weight loss of about another 30 kilogram he came to consult me with a scan that's already performed and the scan here showed that this pet scan showed that why he's having pain because the tumors involved the right right leg the pelvis and the kidney as well over here even the sacrum is has a tumor that's involved that's the top of the scalp and the, the pelvic bone where uh, just in front of the hip, the two hips, is this brightness here indicating the tumor is eroded into the into the bone structure. This is his latest scan in October 2021. There's no evidence of disease in the current PET scan. The, the skull bone here is clear of cancer. The hip bone here is clear of cancer. The liver is clear of cancer. We did not undergo any surgery, but just medical therapy. And this, he, and we achieved this result. And this gentleman received this result, possible because of the continuous development in the in the in the arena of kidney cancer. Kidney cancer has has a, has treatment has gone through a lot of changes. Why do we need to talk about kidney cancer? We'll go into the historical perspective. I'll go to the current perspective. And of course, shortly, we have just a, a message on hopes and promises for the future. Why kidney cancer? Kidney cancer co constitute about 2 to 3% of all cancers. In, but it's the, the incidence is, in, is ever increasing. And the man, Incidence is actually right now ranked number seven, number eight here. And is increasing because of various reasons. And this is because of the increasing number of patients with hypertension, diabetes, and obesity. And you can see that every weight that increase by twofold has a 28% increase in the risk of developing kidney cancer. Men develop kidney cancer more than women, two is to one. It occurs among, among elderly patients and smoking, obesity, diabetes, chronic renal failure can increase the risk. It's important that some of these factors, especially the C to F, are preventable. So we need to take care of our health to reduce the incidence of kidney cancer. Now, there's a lot of advancement in kidney cancer. Just to sidetrack, I first gave a lecture in, uh, I gave a radio talk in 2007 on kidney cancer. And on and off, I still receive messages from my friends or phone calls from my friends saying, hey, you're on radio again. But that was the last time I gave an update on kidney cancer in 2007. Apparently, 93.8 has been repashing, replaying the clip on kidney cancer the investment of kidney cancer in 2007 now it is so way back right now that in fact i i informed 93 point not to play that the clip because it is so outdated and it's so timely that uh 365 uh cancer prevention society invited me to give a talk on kidney cancer and hopefully 93 point can listen to this talk and say that they see so much more advancement than the time when i talk about one single drug sulitinib in kidney cancer management. Now, the kidney cancer management improvements has always because we understand the kidney cancer better. 
we understand that um, there are many targets that can be treated, which I will talk about later. But today, I will not talk about the early stage management of early stage cancer because it is more surgical, right? Suffice to say that early stage cancer are cancers that the kidney cancer has not spread beyond the kidney. Beyond the kidney is called advanced kidney cancer or stage four kidney cancer. This cancer, kidney cancer, can spread to the lung, the liver, or anywhere in the body. I've seen a patient with kidney cancer that spread to the internal part of the nose and on the top of the head. Right? So we will be focusing on the management of the late stage kidney cancer or recurrent kidney cancer. Now, the, 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 the treatment of early stage kidney cancer is actually just to, is to cure and to prevent recurrence because it's localized and amendable with surgery. I just want just to say a few words on surgery. It's usually either a, the treatment of early stage kidney cancer can be either surgical or radiological procedure. If the tumor is very small enough and they can burn the tumor by using radiological means like using microwave or radi radiation frequency ablation, that is to preserve the kidney function as well. But if the kidney tumor, if those localized, is a bit too big to do so, then they have to do an entire kidney surgery remover. Or if the tumor is at the top, at the side of the kidney, you can do a partial kidney remover and preserving the, the, the rest of the kidney function. But even with early stage kidney cancer, there's always a chance of recurrence. It depends on the size of tumor, the grade of tumor, the recurrence risk is May, may vary from person to person. In the latest, well, most recent study on preventing kidney cancer, right, there is now a treatment called immunotherapy that can reduce the chance of disease coming back. And this is published in 2001, New England Journal of Medicine, where patients undergo uh, immunotherapy, which are described the treatment later for one whole year, Versus a group of patients who have done undergo surgery but have not gone through immunotherapy, the risk of recurrence is reduced by 47%. Now, this is very early studies. The, re the studies reported at 24 months of, re of, of, the, of, of the closure of the study. Uh, we will, of course, have to follow up much longer to see whether there is significant improvement in terms of overall survival. Now let's go to the main meat of the matter, which is the treatment of advanced kidney cancer. Now, historical perspective. In the past, before 2007 or 2004, there has been no effective kidney cancer therapy, no, no effective treatment for kidney cancer other than immunotherapy. Those are the good old days immunotherapy. Kidney cancer is purported to be not effective, doesn't respond to chemotherapy, hormonal therapy, or radiotherapy. But we do see spontaneous regression of a tumor in patients with advanced disease occasionally. We allude that to a person's strong immunity. But in general, spontaneous regression of a tumor is very uncommon. That's why in the olden days, we, because of chem chemotherapy, not being effective in kidney cancer therapy, we try immunotherapy. Uh, we call it exogenous immunotherapy, where we use interleukin therapy to treat a patient. Although you can see in this graph, the survival probability of those patients who receive this therapy is um, is, is can, can cut off to about 20% in the long term. That means 20% of them have survived with advanced kidney cancer. But this therapy, was fraught with high incidence of toxicity and some patients who are not fit may succumb to the treatment. Now, and as a result, the life expectancy was short. But right now, right, because of the increased incidence of increased, increased incidence rate of the kidney cancer, there has always been interest in developing the newer therapy. And the new therapy was developed because of better understanding of how the disease was developed. It was known to be a very bloody tumor. And this tumor is, the tumor is very bloody because it's full of blood and blood vessels. 
And as a result, we understood, we continue to understand and, under, and understudy why did the tumor develop blood vessels. And it's because of certain loss of protein, loss of certain mutation that result in the blood vessels growth. Pharmaceutical company invest in the, in the trials and develop targeted therapy to target these blood vessels, which retard the growth of this tumor, right? And this is shown in this cartoon. This is the tumor, tumor cells, and this is the blood vessel cells. Because of the loss of a certain mutation in kidney cancer, associated with kidney cancer, a lot of protein along the cell membrane start to be very active. And this produce signals to the nucleus and uh, allow the nucleus to develop new cells and also to induce uh, the existing blood vessels to grow towards to grow new blood vessels towards the tumor cells. This allowed the feeding of the tumor with nutrition, nutrients, at the same time in the opposite direction, allow the tumor to spread to other organs. With this understanding, pharmaceutical company and researcher develop target therapy to target all these active proteins along the cellular membrane. In the past, um, when we first start, when we first started treatment, there was only a few target therapy called solitinib, sorafenib, and persophenib. But the most recent, um, there has been increase in the development of better drugs called carbocetinib, yeah, include carbocetinib, levitinib, which have more targets and targeting them with more potency. The other improvement in the, under, in, in the treatment of kidney cancer is the development of immunotherapy, better immunotherapy compared to the interleukin or interferon. Now, is we now understand that, or we, there's increasing understanding that most of the time, kidney cancer, any cells, any cancer cells in our body is due to the escape mechanism. It escape the immune system of the, of the body. The immune system functions in the body to recognize each cell, injured cells, and cancer cells as well. If they can recognize the cancer cell, it will destroy the tumor by attaching itself to, to the tumor cells and destroy it. But why do cancer cells develop? Why do kidney cancer especially develop in cancer patients? You and me may have cancer cells, but it's because our immune system that is competent and competent to recognize cancer cells that, that the cancer cells do not manifest in our body. The possibility of kidney cancer development is because our immune cells was unable to recognize the cancer cell. These are immune cells and these are cancer cells. The immune cells may be able to escape the recognition of the immune cells because they may produce a certain protein called PDL1. PD stands for programmed life death ligand, and it attaches itself to the immune cells receptors, causing it not to recognize the cancer cells as the bad cells and allow it to escape and, and grow as a result. Immunotherapy right now is to able to eradicate this protein from the kidney cancer cells or block the receptor so that the kidney cancer cells protein will not attach to the receptor here. As a result, the, the, the immune cells were now able to recognize the cancer cell and destroy it. It's like removing the sunglasses of a policeman and as a result, the policeman can recognize the cancer cell and, that's, and thereby catch, catches it and destroy it. But sometimes the immune cells can recognize can be recognized by the by the, by the the immune cell can recognize the cancer cell. However, they may not have the strength to destroy it. And this could be due to another mechanism that arises because of the laziness of the, T, the immune cells. And this is because also because of a protein that is produced that is attached itself to the immune cells, telling itself, don't move. You can recognize, but don't move. But this, so, the coordination of this pathway allows a uh, researcher to develop another, another drug, another treatment to, to remove this certain protein so that the immune cells now have the energy, can be energized and at the same time can recognize cancer cells and destroy. This is actually, this double therapy is called double immunotherapy. The NTPDL therapy 
as mentioned earlier, the cells that the drugs that are available right now includes pembrolizumab, nivolumab, and the, and the one that is against anti CTLA four is epilobimab. With the with the with the discovery of all this target therapy and immunotherapy, since two thousand seven, there have been new advances. As you can see on this slide, in two thousand and seven, where we, we I first spoke on the uh, radio ninety ninety three point eight, it was to actually focus on the improvement of outcome with of kidney cancer management with sulitinib, as the first generation uh, target therapy against the blood vessels versus the immuno, versus a standard common immunotherapy. You can see that the graph. The survival curve of the graph, uh, survival curve of the solitary is above the immunotherapy curve, the old immunotherapy curve of interferon. This in, this in, indicate there is an improvement in survival at a period of, at a fixed period of time, and you can see that at the twelve at the twelve months, there was early reporting, but at but when the time of reporting of this study, it sh there was a report of a uh, more than 50% improvement in the survival at a, as a period of time. I've done reporting about 12 months to 24 months. Beyond that, since uh, since newer drugs has been developed, carbocetinib, azitinib, in combination of immunotherapy, immunotherapy with target therapy of labetinib or labetinib with another oral medication called target everolimus, they were compared with sulitinib. It also showed that in and it showed that in, in 2020 report that the carbocetinib itself was superior to sulitinib. And there was a reduction in, in disease growth by about 40%. Similar report were found in this combination of immunotherapy with uh, azitinib, and the target therapy compared to azitinib alone. And primalizumab and devolumab also showed an improvement in about 40 to 60% compared to uh, solitinib. The double, immuno, the double immunotherapy was also, um, was, also, uh, was also superior to solitinib, but this, I, I don't think I have the slides here. So, when we talk about improvement in outcome compared to 2007, there has been a 40% improvement and another 40% improvement, in, followed by another 40% improvement in terms of preventing disease growth when you are faced with advanced disease. I'd like to share with you what is the real life story of another man who is 53 years old. You can see on this PET scan that he has multiple very bright nodules in the lung, both lungs. This is the heart, this is the lung. Very advanced disease. He has a, what you call a clear cell renal cell carcinoma. This is a standard renal cell carcinoma, the most common type. Sarcomatoid means that it's a grade four, very aggressive disease. Most of these patients in the past used to die within one year, one year period. This is his scan three years after the PET scan. The lung nodules have all disappeared. And this is the latest X-ray that was done uh, just this month. Very funny story about him was that he was born in a family of two, two sons. And the father thought that he was going to die because of the kidney cancer and he and he bewailed the, his uh, business to his second son who do not have the kidney cancer. Now that he's so well, five years, um, seven years, uh, no, seven years, I say six years now, his father has decided to change the will and decided to share the, 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 uh, the business uh, between the two brothers. I have another patient here. In, 2000, in November 2003, she was 49 years old. Again, presented with a very big left kidney mass. This is the right kidney mass. This is the right left kidney mass. 
you can see the tumor here on the coronal view. The tumor also invaded to the backbone. All right. She was treated with, at that time, in point, at that point in time, uh, simple therapy at Pasopenib, which is the current, that's at the time the standard therapy uh, in 2000 and, uh, 2013. The disease was controlled, but soon later, in 2015, there was recurrence. There was recurrence in the uterus. You can see here, the mass here. But in 2015, we started, to use, there were a lot of new drugs available. There was immunotherapy. She consulted, initially when she presented with this disease, recurrent disease, she consulted a gynecologist who told her that you must go for surgery to remove the uterus. At the same time, remove the bladder because the bladder is involved and to remove the, the rectum as well. This is called pelvic exaggeration. So, so that she had to carry a pouch to collect the stool, a pouch to, to pass urine. Fortunately, in fact, I had to plead with her. There's a new therapy in the market, immunotherapy. And I said, just let me try for two months and see what's the outcome like. And the rest was history, right? And she's now 58 years old. The pelvis is clean without any surgery. She, she kept her rectum. She kept her bladder. And although she had, again, recurrence in her lung, this was in 2001, 2021, March. I, I tweaked the treatment a little bit more, and the disease is now under control again. So what about the future. I think that for future, of course, we try to strive to do better for our patients. We have won many battles, but we have not won the war. As mentioned earlier, early stage cancer, the aim is to reduce the recurrence, as this now is the standard of care. We will try to improve and reduce. We will try to get better therapy to try to re further reduce the possibility of recurrence. As for advanced stage of disease, we will try to improve the outcome of treatment through identifying the right patient to treat with the right drug or the right combination. With more potent combo and the new drugs possible in the pipeline. This morning, I had my clinic in the, in the I had my morning clinic. Again, I was referred to another kidney cancer patient. This is a, a right kidney tumor over here and it invaded into the renal vein. From the renal vein, it can go to the heart and it goes to the lung. This is continuous work in process. Our, bet, our, our fight against kidney cancer never end because the incidence of kidney cancer is increasing. With that, I'd like to thank you for attending this talk. I'd like to thank the 365 Cancer Prevention Society for organizing this talk, the audience and participants for listening to, to this talk today, my staff, Huishan and team for preparing the slides for me, and my patients for the chance to care for them. Back to you, Sarah. Thank you, Dr. Tay, for insightful sharing. And now we come to our Q&A section. Um, so there's this question coming from Agnes. Um, my question is, doctor, I have a thermal mark and have hypotense right renal lower pole nodule of 1.3 cm. Please advise, what should I do? Sorry, you, I, I, I didn't get you. Can you um, the, the question, page? sure. The question is, doctor, I have thermal mark and or have hypotense right renal lower pole nodule 1.3 cm. Please advise, what should I do? Um, I, I thought that we are not talking about personal questions, in, but in general, but this is doesn't seem to be like a cancer, right? Because hypodensity can be a cyst. Um, so basically, in kidney, uh, not everything you see, or mass, 
or hypodensity or egg or shadow is a tumor. It's important to confirm what is it by consulting your doctor, by doing further testing, by doing a scan, uh, doing other, uh, sometimes we even need to follow up for a period of time to see whether it's a growth or not. Yeah. So I will not advise him any the management because we are not confirmed whether it's cancer or not. Okay, thank you, Dr. Tay. There's another question from Adeline. Um, hi, Dr. Tay. First of all, thank you so much for giving this talk. Uh, so can you share with us what are the challenges of getting a cure or going to remission at the various stages of kidney cancer? Uh, basically, uh, when we talk about uh, cure rate for kidney cancer patients, really depends on the stage of disease and the degree of disease. We all know about, you know, when we when they attend a cancer clinic, uh, we always talk about the grade and stage. What do they actually mean? The grade of cancer, it means that how aggressive they are, right? You can have a stage one with a low grade, or a stage one with a high grade. Obviously, the high grade cancer, stage one has a higher chance of recurrence than stage right? So the size and the spread which refers to the stage disease, right? A tumor that is less than 7 cm is stage one. A tumor that is more than 7 cm is stage two, right? And you better involve the vein or not, or the renal vein or not, or the fat tissue around it will affect the stage. We will restage somebody, something is to tell you the potential outlook as a result of treatment. Most of the early stage disease we treat with surgery and uh, the recurrence rate can be as low as 10 percent for stage one to 60 percent or 80 percent for a stage local stage four disease that means they spread to the fat tissue to high grade cancer that's why for for preventive of kidney cancer recurrence to, for those who have undergone surgery we try to identify those with a high risk of recurrence basically more than 7 cm a high grade cancer but for lower grade, it must be bigger than 7 cm, like T3, T4, which is more than 12 cm, then you may give one year of uh, one year of uh, immunotherapy through in order to reduce the risk of recurrence by about 30 to 40 percent. But in terms of stage 4 cancer or recurrence cancer, most of the time in the past, they used to say that it's not curable. Even with treatment, we can prolong life, but it's not curable. And, the cure, and, and, and how long we prolong the life depends on the, the need, character of the cancer. We call it a prognostic group. It can be the very aggressive one. It can be the not so aggressive one. Where the, where, where the not so aggressive one, when you treat them, they tend to respond well for a longer period of time and they control for a longer period of time before they recur again. They use another therapy and they still can respond. But for very aggressive one, sometimes they do not, they do not respond. Those who do not respond to the first treatment, don't respond to the second treatment, they tend to do badly and the prognosis outlook is short. All right. But with the events of immunotherapy, I will tell you that there is now, I will not, not I will not now say there's no chance of cure. There is a possibility chance of cure because I've seen with my own eyes, in my own clinic, that what I thought was not curable. The patient is very prolonged remission. You've seen the, the few examples. The proof is in the pudding, right? They have advanced cancer, and I thought that they will not, they will not survive for two to three years. But the advance of treatment, every time I treat them when it is gotten worse, there's new therapy available. And some of these therapies are so good that they can use a complete rest, complete remission. And then after that, we keep following them years after years, hey, the disease never come back. I'll say them, and I told them that, you know, I think we don't need to scan anymore. We just do an x-ray. Have confidence. It may not come back. So nowadays, if it is very from person to person. It's very hard to tell you, but you just need to have your treatment, the right treatment. And we, it's like striking a lottery when you, you and your treatment goes very well, and you do very well, you respond very well. 
and when you are following up, you don't see any disease coming back. It's, that is the most rewarding uh, outcome for me and for the patient. Thank you, Dr. Tay. And there's a next question coming from Meng Gui. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. So the question is, is there a screening like colonoscopy uh, to detect early kidney cancer too? Well, uh, screening for cancer really depends whether you can detect, whether the cancer is common enough, whether the screening test is accurate enough, and uh, can 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 find even early stage before they become cancer, not even cancer. But for kidney cancer, unfortunately, there's no method to do so. Yeah. So you just have to listen to your body. In fact, the most early stage cancer are incidental finding. What I mean is that the patient has some other symptoms and then they go and do a I say ultrasound on the domain for abdominal pain. They found a mess in the kidney. So this, but this abdominal pain is not due to the kidney tumor. It's too small to cause that. So it's an incidental finding. Occasionally, you may have some kidney cancer patient, kidney ca cancer that produce blood in the urine. But if the tumor is in the periphery of the kidney, they tend not to produce blood in the urine. And by the time they produce blood in the urine that at the time, you're going to be very advanced stage, right? So there is no, so you have to listen to the body. Some of the subtle symptoms of kidney cancer is could be actually just loss of weight, unrelenting fever. How come I keep getting fever when, when I don't have any evidence of infection? Yeah. So these are the very subtle signs of kidney cancer. But I don't want you to go back thinking that every can every fever you must go and screen for kidney cancer these are far few in between compared to infection or now nowadays compared to covid infection so um to answer your questions whether there's screening effective screening for kidney cancer there isn't all right compared to breast cancer and colon cancer thank you dr Tay. Um, now there's this question coming from Chantel. I hope I pronounced this word correctly. Um, so what is the cause of an angioloma? Will it become cancerous? Will it disappear on its own? And is there any medication to make a 0 0.8 cm angiomyoma disappear? Okay. Uh, angiomyolipoma, the word is very long. It consists of angio, which is a blood, myo means muscle, Lipoma is fat. It's a collection of nodules consisting of these three tissues. And uh, it's uncommon. Uh, we call it a hamatoma because it, it is a mixed bag of tissues that's, that's present in the, in, the, in, in the organ that's not supposed to be present in the organ itself. Most of the time, it doesn't cause any problem. And there's no need to treat if it doesn't cause any problem. But occasionally, this type of, this type of hamatoma or angiomyolipoma may continue to grow and anything that is beyond 3 cm it may cause problem like bleeding and cause a lot of pain as a result of bleeding but it doesn't turn cancerous or should i say that it hardly turn cancerous it is different from what we are talking about today kidney cancer it's a different type of topic altogether yeah they are medicine to treat but there's no need to use to treat yeah Thank you. While waiting for other questions to come in, maybe I can ask a question. Um, can I ask what are the side effects uh, associated with immunotherapy? Well, uh, we are talking about modern immunotherapy. Um, the side effect of modern immunotherapy is actually um, a too strong an immune system. We activate the immune system to kick, we, to do, to, to, to attack the cancer cells, but sometimes the immune system gets so strong they start attacking your own body. And the most common side effect, or uh, such side effect that we've seen, is a bit of diarrhea, where the immune system cells attack the intestine. So we call it colitis, diarrhea due to colitis, right? Colon and itis. Sometimes they get allergy, skin reaction, rashes. You got dermatitis. 
occasionally may affect the lung. So lung is what like pneumonia, right? Pneumonitis. But these are far few in between, like not so common compared to if you receive chemotherapy for other cancer. Yeah. And it's easy to recognize and easy to treat the side effect by just by giving steroids to reduce the immune system. Okay. Um, maybe I can ask another question. Um, how would kidney cancer treatment affects daily life? Will the patient be able to work full-time, exercise, and perform usual activities? If we talk about early-stage kidney cancer with after surgery, unless the other kidney function is also affected, otherwise you can live a normal life because we only need one kidney to function. All right? But have, having said that, you have to protect the other kidney. Make sure you don't take too much salt or uh, don't do any exercise that is too violent. They, you know, like take one door, they may accidentally kick your the other kidney and then you get contusion and affect the kidney function. Uh, other than that, you can live a normal life. In terms of the advanced kidney cancer with treatment, you can still live a normal life, except that you are inconvenient and you come to see the doctor on and off every month or every every two months to receive treatment and for consultation the target therapy fortunately is oral medication all right so and you have to take it every day right but you don't you can take every day at home at the office there's no need to come to clinic to take the immunotherapy right now at the current moment is the infusion of half an hour at the clinic you need a blood test you need uh followed by consultation and, and receive treatment for that by and large, little hindrance to, to, to daily life. All right. Um, perhaps I can ask one more question. Um, in terms of like diet-wise, do you have any suggestion how, how they can eat as well? Well, I, I think end of the day, uh, we are talking about prevention of kidney cancer. Uh, as mentioned before, obesity, you know, in Singapore, we are getting, everybody's getting fatter. You know, we are really cut down that by eating better, exercise, exercise more. At the same time, also, uh, diabetes can cause obesity, can also induce kidney cancer as well. So we need to prevent diabetes if possible. And for those who have diabetes, control your diabetes better. Also, hypertension. Minister Ong Yi Kang has been talking about uh, fighting a war against salt. And salt is the cause of hypertension. And so it's very important to, pre to reduce all these correctable risks. Because you cannot correct uh, your sex. Uh, male develop more kidney cancer than female. You can't change that. All right? Neither can you change your aging. So these are incorrectable, uncorrectable risk factors. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Dr. Day. Um, maybe I can ask one more question. Wow. We see whether there will be more questions coming in. Um, could kidney cancer treatment affects a patient's sex life? If so, and how for how long? Mm, kidney cancer affects sex life. Uh. It all depends. <laughs> so some patients are so stressed. Of course, the thought of having sex is not uh, is 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 affected. Uh. I mean, end of the day, um, the treatment that they undergo will not affect sex life. Thank you. Um, there's a question from May Wu. Will kidney cancer yeah, migrate to I other organs? Those treatments with target therapy can affect can affect uh, congenital abnormality in babies. So it is important. It is very important that we must not uh, get a lady or, or a patient who is a lady pregnant because this drug will cause uh, abnormal development of the limbs and the, the, the limbs including upper limbs and lower limbs in the babies now is actually a more potent drug than thalidomide thalidomide babies are those that you know have very shortened arm and legs and thalidomide last time was used to to in the past to to treat the those uh, pregnancy uh, or nausea and vomiting so now that drug is banned for for such purposes but and, and and this target therapy for kidney cancer is even more potent drug than that. 
So we must always tell them, you want to have sex, use condom. Do not uh, get anyone pregnant. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so for May Wu, there's a question. Will kidney cancer migrate to other organs later on in life to cause other organs to have cancer? No. So when we talk about that, I'm assuming that we are talking about where can kidney cancer spread. Yes, kidney cancer can spread. And when they spread, uh, or they can recur, they can usually recur in other organs. They can recur locally, in a place where the kidney was, that has been removed, or they can spread to other place. Most of the time, it's other place. Like you can see in the, in the examples that I, I cited, uh, they would like to go to the bone, they like to go to the lung. In fact, I, I, as mentioned before, they can go anywhere, even the year I've seen it. Yeah. So it's possible. Yeah. But uh, you, you got to understand that it's not they develop lung cancer if they spread to the lung. It's the same cell type, cell clone from the kidney. So we don't say that he has lung cancer because of the kidney cancer. We say that he has kidney cancer spread to the lung. And we do not say that it's a bone cancer as a result of the kidney cancer, but it's cancer of the kidney that spread to the bone. They're the same cell type. So that when you use treatment for the spread to the lung, you use a kidney cancer drug and not a lung cancer drug. Okay, um, there's this question coming from Angie. Is there any side effect for immunotherapy? Oh, that's not as we mentioned before. Uh, there's uh, a lot of potential, a lot of side effects for immunotherapy, but most of them are very controllable and they're actually uh, quite minor as well. Yeah. Uh, any body system, any body system can affect by the immune system. Uh, rarely do I see very serious side effects. Uh, some of them are more uh, irritating more like a diarrhea, skin rash, which you can manage with some steroids. Uh, I've seen patients that uh, they became diabetic because the immune cells somehow attack the insulin producing cells, they become diabetic. And we are now, I, by this current patient has stopped the treatment because he's in complete remission. He has had two years of immune therapy. So we stopped the treatment and hopefully we will see the improvement in diabetes control. Thank you, Dr. Day. And um, there's a last question from Susanna. If a breast cancer patient has the cancer spread to their kidneys, how are the treatment done to them? So it all depends. Um, th so this I'm assuming most likely, okay, most likely is a breast cancer that spread to the kidney. So it's a breast cancer cell, not the kidney cancer cell, all right? Uh, although we have seen uh, you can develop kidney cancer as separately while you're having breast cancer. That is very complex. But if it's a breast cancer that spread to the kidney, you treat the disease as for breast cancer using the breast cancer drugs. And that can use chemotherapy, hormonal therapy. Uh, immunotherapy for, kidney, for breast cancer is only for a subtype of a subset of patient. We call it the triple negative. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Day. Um, our Q&A session will now come to an end. Thank you, Dr. Day, for your insightful sharing tonight. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Sarah. And before we end our Facebook Live, we will appreciate your feedback on today's session. Do help to complete the feedback form by scanning the QR code. And our next talk will be on the topic of all you need to know about colorectal cancer, risk factors, screening tests, and treatment by two speakers. Um, the two speakers are Dr. Patricia Ko and Dr. Chu Ming Ho. It will be on the 6th of April at 8.30 p.m. Do save the date in the calendar and we hope to see you on the 6th of April. And moving on to our next slide. Do visit both our social media website by 365 Cancer Prevention Society and Encore Care Cancer Center. And with that, we will be ending our Facebook Live talk for tonight. Thank you.